so here I am. Uh, here I am to talk about digital activism, the need, and you. Actually, this is a broad subject and not really technical for you guys, but yeah, it's more of more like philosophical. But I'm not thinking uh, like technology and philosophy or activism shouldn't go hand to hand. Should be together. Because you are not robots, right? Uh, what are robots? Robots are uh, things that are programmed to do something or programmed to learn something and do something uh, like in artificial intelligence. You have some responsibility, like a personal responsibility. You know, don't, you don't call it personal responsibility, but because you do it for yourself. And then there is this uh, social responsibility, which you don't consider most of the cases. And uh, this digital activism part comes on that side mostly. Social responsibility. Uh, I would like to start with a question. Why you guys live? Means why you guys want to live? What's the purpose of it? What do, you get, what do you think? Anyone has an idea? Ever thought of it? Why you want to live? Anyone? You. You have any plans for life, or any for plans for life, other than uh, get a job, something. I think my mom used to say, uh, she always used to say, uh, no, study well, get good marks, uh, because only if you get good marks, you get good jobs. And why uh, only if you get good job, you can uh, you can get a good life. Actually, she figured, uh, figured out till the part, uh, get good job, you get a good life. But she didn't say, what is good life? What is good life? Then, yeah, uh, actually, yeah, uh, she figured out till uh, get good life, but what is good life isn't answered. So I had to figure it myself. So. Uh, I had my own rebellions in my life, and uh, I tried and learned few things. And uh, on that path, I came to this place. Uh, I'm here standing in front of you as a political activist, uh, free software enthusiast, uh, Wikipedian. Yeah, something like that. So, so uh, I, I want to ask another question. Uh, why you why you guys are here? Means most of you are NIT students, I think. How many of you are from NIT? Just two, three. So uh, everyone else are from outside. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. That's it. Uh, who are from Kerala? Okay. That's great. Okay. Uh, how many of you are B Tech? Okay. Most of them. Uh, how many of you joined BTEC because you wanted to, because you like the subject? Okay, some. That's great. Uh, how many of you uh, joined BTEC just for money? Means get to get, to get a good job and to get good money? No, don't 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 be don't be afraid. Don't uh, don't be ashamed. Just raise your hands. It's a new trend. Get money. How many of you? No one. One. Wow, that's great. I love this guy. <laughs> Yeah, money is a thing, but you know, money uh, can money buy happiness? You know, that's a great question. Actually, money can buy chicken nuggets and French fries. <laughs> that makes me happy, right? <laughs> well, uh, maybe money is not everything. Maybe money is everything. But uh, in a capitalist world, money is everything. This is kind of everything. Yeah, let's uh, get back to the talk. Uh, it might be boring, but yeah, if it's get boring, just tell me. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's not working, I think. Can I get him? Oh, okay, thank you. So, technology. Uh, what makes us humans? means uh, what makes us different from other animals? 
uh, why we are we have evolved to this uh, this length uh, like to invent uh, things that has its own intelligence how we get there because we have a certain thing called technology maybe it's just a stone piece of stone like uh, in stone ages uh, we had stone stone tools uh, to make things to kill things uh, to cut things it's a tool and it's a technology and uh, technology didn't stay there it evolved so these two things is the evolution of technology made us uh, humans at this level uh, to think different to act different think out of the box it's like that and uh, yeah and it evolved from mechanization water power plants steam power plant mass production in the second industrial revolution third industrial revolution and now we are standing at the fourth industrial revolution and this uh, evolution part was was very fast at the last stages because we had uh, adequate tools tool sets and everything and we will come to that uh, later and what is use value well uh, you guys buy smartphones right everyone has has a smartphone uh, what what are the things that has in your mind when you buy a smartphone uh, anybody so uh, what are, what are you, what are the things you think about uh, when you uh, when you are going to buy a smartphone it should last for a reasonable amount of time okay that's pretty much all i look that's all uh, you don't look for the other specs no no okay that's a great answer now anyone else clarity and ram battery, battery and ram oh, that's great so nobody want a selfie camera uh, of uh, 30 pixel dual camera double flash stock android stock android oh that's great <laughs> any lineage guys nobody Wow, that's one, two. <laughs> that's great. So, what is use value? Use value is uh, uh, what we get out of from a product. Uh, like, uh, if you are looking for a camera, or you're looking for a, a battery or long life, it's all it's all use value. Yeah, that is use value. But uh, that is when uh, we think about ourselves. Means that's what we need. But when we look at the social perspective, we have to look for certain other things too. You now, when we buy a product, like when we buy a mobile, does it con uh, contain conflict minerals? Like uh, uh, from Africa, where people are uh, made to do slavery to get, no, it is not uh, these days called slavery, it is called hard work, but yeah. Uh, uh, it doesn't make sure it doesn't have a, a social con uh, conflict mineral or like uh, it is not made to for uh, you know if you are uh, buying a t-shirt or uh, any other product it is not made in a search shop now how many of you are apple guys are here apple mac uh, iphone anyone okay uh, have I, uh, have you thought about uh, uh, people in china means those who are working to uh, make this product uh, in search shops to make iPhones and other products uh, when you bought it? Have I had a thought about it? Means that that's, uh, that's why, that's what comes to when we look at the social perspective of things. When you buy products, now uh, we are not sharing products anymore, we are buying things. That's another thing with capitalism. So, how is social perspective related to digital revolution? Well, everything. Well, that's we are going to see. And technological growth, as I said, uh, it was very fast, 4000 BC, and now, now if you look at uh, somebody owning a car in 4000 BC, uh, they will know everything, uh, every technology about it. 4000 BC, uh, in, uh, no, the, in 4000 BC, a car would be just like uh, a stone tire or something. It's not car, right? it's a wheel. That might be the car in 4000 BC, and nowadays uh, we have uh, like Lamborghini, which has most of its part are digitalized, which is some, uh, some of them are automated, Tesla. Now we have automated drivings right now. So uh, the thing with it is we cannot understand most part of it. 
most of our programmed. And when it comes to AI, we cannot uh, understand the neural networks. We, we will not understand the neural networks. We can only understand the uh, database that is given to the AI, which is the raw data and all. But it is impossible for us to understand what's going inside a product. And that, uh, and uh, of course, computational capability increased, and that made this thing to happen. OK. So because of these things, we, have, we are incapable of understanding everything un undergoing in a product, like uh, a car, a mobile phone. How many of you know uh, how a mobile phone works? Means maybe knows how the program works, maybe knows uh, an IC works, but you cannot understand how a mobile phone as a whole works. Means everything is so much speci uh, specialized. We cannot uh, ignore that. You know, we cannot. It, is, it, is in a, in a, it is inevitable. Uh, this computational cap uh, means everything is increased. Computational capability increased, uh, the complexity increased, and that's what uh, made us to uh, not involve the whole part of it. Means like we are not thinking about it. You know, previous days uh, we have industrial revolution came. In all cases, we could understand things. Were we could understand the, we, we could understand our problems. We, so we could understand and teach others the problems what we are underlying problems. But in the digital world we have right now, it is increasingly difficult the problems underlying with this digital world, even to understand. And uh, you know, the case with uh, sh telling others is very, very difficult. Now we cannot teach some guys uh, what's the importance of privacy. We ha they have to feel it. With, uh, we cannot say why open knowledge is needed. Means it is more easier because uh, most of them are experienced with not access, uh, impossibility to access, access data. But yeah. Okay. Uh, business models when profit comes to play. Uh, sharing knowledge is not profit. Actually, that's where everything started. Like uh, previous case, uh, publications started. Uh, it has to be printed out. It's not a there's no digital copies. So uh, they bought little money to publish those things, and later those uh, behavior stayed on. And now, even now, when we have everything is digitalized, uh, these uh, publishers by get asking money for, from us to uh, share our product. But uh, it's not, that's not the point from it. Uh, I'm talking about IPRs, uh, patent and salt. The basic idea between uh, in uh, IPRs and intellectual property rights and patents are sharing knowledge is uh, a difficult thing to make profit. You know, if you share the, your knowledge, somebody else will make some idea from from it, and uh, no, that will be difficult to make profit, and we will be screwed. That's one point. Uh, our knowledge system deteriorated, I think. Uh, now, about talking about, yeah, I'm a physics student, I'm a physics major. Why physics developed to, the, to this stage? Why? It is because, uh, like our forefathers, didn't hide their knowledge from us. They put their knowledge in public domain. Means there was no concept of corporate or intellectual property. Uh, all they wanted to share their knowledge, just to express their knowledge, and they are happy about it. They want others to know it. Means there are people died because they want to know and uh, express their knowledge. You no, know, in like uh, uh, Galileo's times, he was put into jail because he shared his knowledge. And nowadays, we just want to confine it, uh, make it profitable, or hoard it uh, to make uh, like uh, uh, to uh, sell it to some companies and later they can use it themselves and all. Second part, uh, it's another topic. If you're not paying for it, you are the product. Uh, at least uh, coming from the latest Google, uh, cloud services, like Facebook, Facebook is a cloud. Uh, you're getting it free, right? Facebook, Gmail, uh, what else, WhatsApp, uh, yeah, uh, so many things. Uh, sound, uh, you're getting sound cross for free? No. Okay. So you're not paying for it, but then what is their business model? Means how they are making profit. You know, I think uh, Twitter has no profit model, right? With how they are making profit. 
like Facebook, their main product is, uh, no, like world's best two companies, Google, Facebook, and their main product is advertisement. And how they are selling their product, to whom, and what is their product? Means product is us, the viewers. It's like uh, when we uh, scroll through our feeds, or we are searching a product, these, uh, these people makes money out of our, yeah, money, money out of our view time. So they want to is uh, keep our view times increase, uh, uh, their view times increased, and they are trying, to attempting to do things to increase their view times. It's like YouTube. Any, how many of you uh, <laughs> means got into a YouTube video and then gone with the auto suggestion and auto suggestion and you now you lost two hours in a second? It is a common scenario, right? And why means uh, why this auto suggestion is so much appealing to us? And we have a lot of algorithm run, run by, you know, there is a big algorithm run by Google just focused on you to, to learn you and, uh, yeah, to suggest to videos because they want more, uh, more, more of your view, view time. If only if you get more of your view time, they can uh, show you more ads. And same with the Facebook. So Facebook is using algorithms to show post that, thi uh, that they think you like and, uh, uh, no, okay, you keep on staying there. Same for TikTok. No, I'm not thinking, talking about TikTok. How many of you are in TikTok? What? How many of you are in TikTok? Like uh, music one? Wow. You know, that guy's like, he's in TikTok. <laughs> oh, nice. Now we got a nice crowd here who's, who's not in TikTok. I love these guys. Oh, this. <laughs> okay. So uh, these things, uh, these new cloud services are so addicting. Yeah, why it is? It is because of this algorithm running for it. And uh, okay, it's a happy thing now. You are staying happy. They are getting money. So what's wrong with it? What's wrong with it? Problem is uh, when we think uh, deeper. Uh, when we think deeper, wh what happens if you get confined with those? It means if you are posting. Uh, some posts and uh, they are the algorithm get uh, a basic idea about your profile means you like this you like that and your opinions are like this and uh, you are attached to a group who has similar ideas because you want to stay they want to keep your uh, eyes not uh, they want to keep your eyes in the feed because uh, only if you see the post you like you just you uh, you'll stay in that website Facebook or something like that means uh, they have to show you the post you are interested. So, how to make that? Uh, to join you with, uh, or connect you with uh, people uh, that have similar ideas. In YouTube, uh, to show you the videos that you like, you has, which has same ideas on. The, what happens is, uh, we going to live in a bubble. Bubble with similar ideas. There is no sharing of ideologies happens in our political stance doesn't doesn't happen we form a political idea bubble like uh, those who think uh, um, like uh, that uh, no ah like vanita uh, madil like woman wall it was good no they they stay in a bubble and those who think vanita uh, uh, <laughs> bubble was a uh, tragedy to our uh, kind of culture that is uh, in other, another bubble. No interaction happens. No interaction happens between these, bub these bubbles. So these bubbles forms and this society becomes. You know, the split between society will increase with time. And might uh, some day or other, like uh, in future, maybe individuals becomes in bubbles. That means these bubbles get uh, smaller, and smaller and smaller in size. When the AI get better and better, means get a perfect match for you guys. Maybe uh, in a bubble, two people say, oh, it's complex, and I'm leaving it. So, next is data is profit. Yeah, that's what I said, data. Uh, how Facebook give you, give you the perfect post, or YouTube give you an interesting video. That is from the data collector from you. And this data is not just for advertisement, they sell it. They sell it everywhere. I mean, uh, it's like, What's the most parcel companies? Now, if you use a parcel company, uh, it's like uh, Blue Dart or anything. Most thing is you'll get so many calls and all. Uh, 
after using it because they're selling our data after they're using it. It's another thing. Uh, but the data selling is more complex in digital world. Like Google, Google can sell everything about you. Means Google can sell everything that you know that you know about yourself. Not uh, more than you know about yourself. Facebook can sell more than what you're going to think. So uh, yeah, that's what they're doing actually. So that uh, data is profit. Mm, yeah, Facebook can use to YouTube has you. And when it comes to politics, uh, previously I said about polarization, uh, now forming bubbles, ideological bubbles. And uh, politics, uh, it is more complex. Like, how many of you heard of, heard of Cambridge Analytica? Very few. Nobody heard about Cambridge Analytica? Okay, Cambridge Analytica was a company uh, who publicly said uh, uh, they can manipulate uh, people's opinion. Manipulate is not, not like fake people's opinion, make people think. They can make people think something. Now, if you want a politician, uh, if a politician wants uh, more votes, they can make uh, people, they can make statistical arrangements and uh, make, uh, yeah, make people's, uh, make people's profiles into a statistical, ar statistical arrangement so they can plan and execute uh, post in uh, medium. Uh, means like extremist, uh, medium extremity, uh, means la far left, far right, medium left, yeah, that kind of things. They just I uh, don't know how to express those guys, uh, to people, but uh, I don't. Know, it's, more, it's a bit more political, but uh, they can change people's views. That's what the Cambridge Analytica said, and they influenced American election in 2016 and uh, Brexit, and uh, we had a thing with a thing in Andhra Pradesh and Delhi. Yeah, there are a couple more controversies there. But the thing is, uh, they use Facebook's data, Facebook's profile data to uh, uh, psychological profile people and to give them post uh, to change their views. Their, ide their idea was to make this uh, sender like uh, neutral people to stand to one place, uh, means to left, uh, to right, and the neutral left people to neutral. Like, uh, you know, if you're thinking uh, something is a fake news, or uh, if you think uh, a politician is saying is saying is a lie, how uh, how are you going to vote for them? It means uh, if a politician said something and we saw a post uh, saying his say, what he saying is a lie, how how what are the chances that you're going to vote for for him? It means which one do you believe? It means uh, you, what 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 do you, what do you believe? Uh, the post or the uh, Politician's opinion. Maybe we, don't have, we don't have time to check, fact check. No, like uh, this is information error. Means uh, this stream is flowing in front of you. Means you have maybe two, three seconds to uh, read a post or something. You don't you have time to go deep into that, like uh, fact-based study on a post. We just look at the post and we feel it and we go on with it. Now what we're saying, uh, we saw a post like he says he's saying lie. Okay, we saw another post saying he's saying truth. So we are confused. So we are not going to vote for him. And that's where we're going to vote for Nota or going apolitical. So uh, so they could uh, take away a lot of voters. And that's why in 2016 election, a uh, lot of voters uh, stayed at home and uh, Trump elected. That was their strategy. And data's power. You saw the, what data could do. It's like uh, they could see, uh, they could change the political scenario. I'm taking the same example as Trump. Like, he was impossible candidate for a presidency because he was a uh, talk show host uh, which has no brain. Means I'm not saying it publicly, but <laughs> means he's not adequate as a president. But how he, how he won the election because the data was manipulated and used. Means it was not manipulated; it was used and it was used to manipulate people's mind. And it will work uh, not just as a private company, it could work as a government too. Let's take China's example. They have this social credit system. Have you, have you heard about social credit system? Anyone? One, okay. Okay, okay. think about a system where people can, oh yeah. think about a system, a system where uh, no, people's actions are constantly monitored and look for uh, loyalty to state. Means if it's loyal to state, 
plus one. If it's uh, uh, not loyal to state, minus one. If you have a uh, friend who is loyal to state, plus one. If you have a friend who is not loyal to state, minus one. What will that What will that do? Means uh, uh, what will that do to dissent? Means uh, we have times with uh, lack of dissent here, like uh, under the governments. Means dissents are always, uh, yeah, uh, like not accepted by the governments. So think about a system where dissent is considered as a crime, not a crime is a minus in value. So in that case, this uh, people who has dissent will be separated as to uh, separate from communities because uh, if you if I'm if I am having a, I'm having dissent opinion against government. Uh, I already have minus one, and those of my friends will have minus one. Those, so my friends will stay from me, because I have a dissent against for our government. So that's the social credit system. That's a whole social credit system. Previously, uh, they restricted the entry to metros and aeroplanes. Uh, those who have low credit scores, it's it's really happening. China is a surveillance state, and this is really happening. And uh, with the other and all, other and all things. I'm expecting this to happen in Indian five, ten years. You know, it's all a matter of national security. You know, national security. So, privacy, surveillance, and free speech. And uh, talking about the credit system uh, and surveillance, it means if this dissent is uh, negatively pointed or uh, state is all powered, right? It's like they have uh, police, uh, army, and all. And they have this surveillance system that tracks every moment of it, moment of you. And if you have dissent against a state or an elected government, what will they do? They will, they will they simply agree with your dissent and uh, change with it? Do you think that will happen in these current political conditions? They will definitely suppress, uh, try to suppress your dissent. That's the thing with the, uh, surveillance. And free speech will be removed. Maybe from yourself means uh, if you are, uh, you will be afraid to say something. If you are say, say something, the government will be surveilling you, and uh, but you are afraid of what will happen to you. That's the thing with the free speech. And you know when we the, when we put these things to algorithm artificial, this will just magnify. Just magnify. I'm not saying about it. They will just magnify. It will be more easier, and more something else. And uh, I heard something else with the artificial intelligence too. Nobody knows about what neural networks means. How uh, an artificial intelligent entity thinks means it's just learned. Uh, means uh, we know what we gave to learn, but we don't know what these things. So uh, when we put a, uh, it's like a censorship algorithm. Like we have a problem with public nudity, right? We have problem with child porn and all. So uh, in Facebook or like other social media, this thing has to be censored, censored automatically. There are too many posts, there are thousands of posts happening in one second, there's no chance a human could do it. So we need some algorithm or artificial intelligence to do it, to detect the photos or content uh, as a, or flagged as a child porn or something like that. So uh, we need uh, help from these things. But problem is uh, uh, we know uh, the database we give it to them but we doesn't understand how they are flagging it. Maybe algorithms can do, but artificial is impossible. Okay, that's what I said about digital. Uh, previously, I said about digital divide. Digital divide is because now nobody can learn learn thing well. But uh, at least you guys can think a little bit apart. Maybe you are a developer. Maybe you are a, a programmer. Uh, maybe you are a designer. Maybe you are um, maybe a hardware, hardware guy. Maybe you can understand parts of it. Maybe you can collaborate and do things. Uh, you can learn things, make simplify, simplify things for other people, and share with others. I Means the worst problem is uh, this divide creates a bigger problem. Like nobody can make, uh, maybe nobody can define a problem alone. We have to work in teams. We have to learn how to collaborate. To understand the problem with the digital uh, digital society right now, right now, right now we having, we cannot understand the problems with uh, uh, this artificial intelligence program just by one guy. We have to look as a team. Okay, 
and this digital divide is uh, more when we think about the public space. Public space, they are not, uh, they don't have enough knowledge like you. Yeah, you go to uh, B Tech and all. You have, you you are that one percentage. And more, more than 99 percent of the world doesn't know what you know because you have a degree with you. So you have to tell them. That's your social responsibility. If you think social responsibility is necessary. And digital activism. The policy or action using vigorous campaign to bring political or social change. I said campaigning is an important part. I'm going to start uh, talk about digital activism without telling about this guy. How many of you know this guy? You got a cute smile. Wow, that's great. No one else? Okay. Uh, how many of you heard about uh, Alexandre Albuquerque? Very few guys. Okay. This guy, this guy just died for uh, sharing knowledge. I can say he he just died. Means uh, I could say he was killed because he shared knowledge. He what he, the crime he did was uh, he uh, downloaded a lot of. Uh, papers like uh, research papers from JSTOR. JSTOR is an online publication agency. Uh, now they print books and all. Uh, you know, from JSTOR, from his MIT lab, uh, just with with intention to share it with others. Means his idea was is to, uh, his idea was the knowledge should be free and uh, it should be shared with others. And so he uh, stood as a rebel and download those. JSTOC documents, and he downloaded from other sources of tells. We are not all. He got a lot of, uh, the, these people slew him. This uh, JSTOC thing has a $1 million uh, uh, fine, and uh, elsewhere, I think, $35 million fine, and uh, 35 years, uh, the crime, the high, he, was been, uh, he was penalized with 35 years in prison. And uh, when, his, uh, when he, had, he thought there, there was no other way, he suicided. He died. He suicided because he thought knowledge should be free, and he downloaded all those desktop data and uh, he made an attempt to, to make it public. Same, with, same thing with Alexandra Albekian, but she is not dead. She is now in exile. No, he's, he, uh, he, she's hiding right now. Yeah, she's a Kazakhstan woman, uh, maybe 30 years old right now. Uh, he started a project called SciHub. How many of you heard, have heard about SciHub? Okay, okay. She started as I have, means uh, she thought knowledge should be free, and uh, she started as I have, uh, uploading these files, and this Sahib address is always shifting, you know. How many of you heard of Pirate Bay? I think almost everyone. Okay, yeah. Pirate Bay, Pirate Bay is almost same thing, but yeah, but with more vast elements. Open knowledge and open data. Creative Commons. Do you, how, how many of you know this Aaron Schwartz uh, was a, uh, was in the founder team on uh, Creative Commons? Yeah. You now, uh, talking about Aaron Schwartz. You no know, things he did. Uh, look, organization, Creative Commons. Most of the Creative Commons, Reddit, Open Library, Dead Drops, Progressive Change, uh, campaign. Dis the, he was uh, he was in the uh, beginning stage of every other, every the, every of these organizations. Uh, he started RSS. How many of you heard of RSS? RSS feeds. You have not heard about RSS feeds? Means news news feeds. Okay. How many of you heard of Markdown? Oh, that's great. Okay. He invented all these all those things like uh, RSS feeds, Markdown. Uh, he was uh, in the beginner team with uh, this like Reddit and all. And this guy died in his uh, age of 25, I think. 25, uh, because he thought he are doing, he's doing something good to community. How many of you know this guy? How many of you know Wikipedia? <laughs> That's good. Uh, he's a founder, Jimmy Wales. Uh, his ideology was, uh, what if all the knowledge in the world is free and accessible to every human. He started Wikipedia based on that idea. And now Wikipedia has grown into a lot of projects and based on a Wikimedia foundations 
there is wiki news there is uh, wikimedia commons where you can upload photos uh, wikipedia source which uh, contains which digitalize uh, public domain books and uh, we have wikidata wikidata is also a, uh, is similar like wikipedia but for computers and it's, a, it's actually a database it's like wiki for data and uh, media wiki which is so free software wikipedia species wiki quotes no uh, you can see yeah you have experience with some of these projects but uh, it started from the idea all the knowledge should be free for every humans his well, he was also an activist but his uh, methods were which more legal uh, if you look uh, from the aaron shorts side he was a pirate he was a uh, hero pirate something like that but he was, his idea was le this idea was legal and now wikipedia is the world's biggest encyclopedia ever and if you are making this into a book you will need 15 or 16 uh, uh, large size libraries to contain all the data in wikipedia and it is evolving and open access uh, these journals now told you about Elsevier and JSTOC and all uh, there are open access journals too which uh, which respects the CC called Creative Commons license, which everyone can access, read, edit, uh, not read, edit, uh, access uh, data. You know, and you can publish in open access uh, journals too. Means if you are um, uh, you have if you are you are making a project or you are making a thesis or something, and you are submitting it into an open access journal, you are being a digital activist too. Means you don't have to be a uh, like. Uh, computer guru to be a digital activist these simple actions like this uh, like uh, sing simple policies like this can make you a digital guru if you are ma making edit in wikipedia you are a digital activist if you are using a free software you are a digital activist and it is free libre software how many of you heard about free software not open source free software yeah what is free software it is you are getting it for free right <laughs> That's why I add Libre software. It is just, it is not free as beer, like small ones say. It is Libre. It is gratis. It's not gratis. It is Libre. Uh, means, uh, it means freedom. The software that provides freedom to share, edit, modify. I, I, it's not just about uh, sharing, edit. Uh, you know, it's, it's not just allowing others to share and edit. It is about being happy when others use your, use your ideas. You know. Uh, when you're making a Wikipedia article, you are, when you're editing a Wikipedia article, you are happy to share your knowledge. You, it's not just you are editing it and you are giving to content or you're making a free software profile, you are a free software developer identity. It's not just that. You are actually should be happy when you share your software, your knowledge and all. That's the thing with uh, free and liberal software. And how many of you heard of GPL v3? Okay, how many of you are software developers? Okay, nice. Uh, GPLv3 is a software de license uh, which uh, which respects freedom. That's what I said. That respects freedom because it asks, uh, it, uh, it says, if you use this software, if you modify this software, it should be, re uh, it should be uh, made it public domain. Uh, no, it's not, it should be re-licensed as so with same license with GPL v3. If you are modifying this pro uh, a software with GPL v3 license, it should be uh, given under GPL v3 license. So the freedom goes on. GPL v3 is a free software license, and uh, those who use free so uh, GPL v3 products will have to make their product as a GPL v3. And that's why most of our applications are still GPL v3. The idea by Richard M. Stallman. Uh, I forgot to put his uh, picture in this. Uh, <laughs> A slide that is a big mistake of a big, big mistake of mine. Uh, I apologize. And uh, his idea, this free software is free software, free software thing is his idea. Like uh, he started in 1980s uh, as free software foundation GNU project, uh, which uh, he started because uh, the uh, there's a funny story. No, uh, funny story. Like uh, he was in a MIT lab. Uh, he was in artificial intelligence group. And uh, his printer wasn't working. So he asked the company to, uh, he thought he could solve the problem uh, because he was a programmer and he's in the AI group. So 
he has little intelligence. So he thought uh, he could solve the problem. So he asked the company to uh, give the code and I will solve it. I will repair it. And the company said no, because the product is copyrighted. So we cannot share it with you. And this cringed him. So uh, he started his own project. Means uh, that times it was Unix that was famous and everywhere. But um, the project was, uh, project had a license. So he thought start to his own, yeah, his own project. And he started a GNU project. GNU stand for GNU is not Unix. It's an acronym, a rec uh, recursive acronym. Uh, GNU is not Unix. So, uh, so he started GNU project and later uh, he saw Linux towards uh, giving out Linux, ke Linux kernel. So joined with, uh, now he have GNU Linux operating systems uh, like uh, Debian, Ubuntu, TrisQL and all. And he started a free, s free software saga. And uh, that's why 100% of our uh, <laughs> supercomputers works on free software. Not calling free software, running on Linux, I think. And uh, your mobile's running on Linux. That's because uh, he had this ideology of free uh, f sharing of free software. Means if, ha if he hadn't think about uh, an idea of free software, everything else was proprietary at that time. And now, now think about the state right now. If you are, you are buying your phone and you had to pay an extra uh, 10,000 for uh, operating system in it, like. Uh, uh, Windows doing it. If you're buying a laptop, you have to uh, add a 7,000 to OS in it. Now, they made things uh, free in the gratis sense too. And convenience free is freedom. That's the most important thing when we come to uh, free software stuff. Now, most people say free software is not usable. Free software is ugly. It is not, uh, it is not user friendly. No. It's the question is, uh, are, you, uh, are you respecting freedom or uh, do you want convenience? If you're respecting, you should be free. If you're thinking you should be free, you should be using free software. It's not just about uh, being the source code be free. Uh, it is about so many other things too. You know, if you think about pri uh, privacy, how many, uh, how, many of you missed, uh, if you're, how many of you use Facebook? No, Facebook, uh, so do you, do you know any public uh, spaces where Facebook source code is released? How many of you understand source code? I'm saying source code a lot. How many of you understand source code means? Okay, that's great. Everyone understand. So, do you think uh, Facebook source code is available to everyone? Do you have any idea how for source, uh, how Facebook works? No. So that's where free software comes to play. Like uh, if you use Diaspora, Diaspora is soft, um, is a free software alternative to Facebook, and we know how Diaspora works because its source code is available. And you, there's Riot. Riot is an open source, uh, also free software alternative for uh, WhatsApp, uh, and which has, which is a lot, lot of features, lot a lot of features, and we know how uh, Riot works, and it has federation and all. There are so many features. But no, it may, be, it may not be usable as other things, but it is the question of freedom. Do you want freedom? Do you want to know what, uh, uh, what people do with your data? Uh, do you want to own your data? Do you, want to be a, do you just want, want your product in a market world? That's the question. And when you, may, when you make a choice in it, that's what makes you a digital activist. And advocacy. Advocacy, yeah, uh, means uh, most part of a digital activism. Oh, sorry. Oh. Most part of the digital activism, uh, you have to be a developer, or you, have, you should have a base idea about uh, how, free, uh, how stuff works and all. But uh, in case of advocacy, you don't have to be that. You, have, you can be a, uh, be a Malayalam student and can be a digital activist too. Be it to share these ideas, to share the ideas of privacy, to share the idea of free software, to share the idea of open knowledge and all. You don't have to be uh, that deep, uh, uh, techy guy to be, a, uh, to be an advocate. And whistleblowers. How many of you know, recognize this guy? Edward Snowden, most of you know, right? How many of you have seen the uh, movie Snowden? You should watch that movie. The uh, case with government is, you know, we think government is uh, some kind of god that uh, give blessing to us. Uh, it's like uh, government is always caring for us. How many of you trust politicians? No, these politicians are this government. 
I'm not going. Uh, politics is very bad and all. Politics is necessary for a del for a con for a country or anything. Politics is necessary. You should have an opinion. There should be voting. There should be election. There should be uh, an elected government. There should be democracy. That's the importance of politics. I'm not saying politics is bad, but how many of you trust current days politicians? And these politicians form the government. And how how can you trust these governments formed by these corrupt politicians? And that's what Edward Snowden, he saw the corruption, he made it uh, available to the public, and the public made decision, this is bad, the NSA is, NSA is bad, NSA is snooping on us, NSA is tapping all our calls, this is not, uh, NSA is uh, taking home, even, it means they are taking bulk data, they are not looking just for terrorists, they are looking for common people. So he thought it bad, and he made things public. And that what made him a digital activist. And community, you know, the uh, in our previous day's talk, uh, something was said, like, you no know, individual voice are very hard to hear. Very hard to hear means like, if you, how, what, what, what all things can you do by, uh, by yourself? You, uh, you have to be uh, your voice. You maybe maybe there are few few, few examples like uh, SRS examples like Einstein or. There's nothing much can do us uh, do alone. Even uh, in society, that is the case. You cannot do anything alone. You have to be form a uh, community. Uh, you have to get a consensus with the community. You have to form a society. So uh, you can share the you share your views. You can raise your voice. It will be heard. That's the thing uh, with being. Uh, that's the thing with being a community. And FSF. You know, when it comes for free software, FSF. Free Software Community of uh, Free Software uh, Foundation, FSF, and we have Wikimedia India India chapter, and there's Wikimedia Foundation in global, and FSEA uh, is an Indian community, Free Software Community of India, uh, and uh, we can find find uh, so many Free Software Communities in India as in uh, mapped here. And you can just log in to, uh, just uh, go to fsec.in. And uh, we need communities more than ever right now. I'm uh, just keeping this part. Uh, ever right now, because because problem is we we know this problem. Uh, this privacy is bad. So, sorry, pirate. Uh, we think this uh, surveillance is bad. We we understand surveillance is bad, but we are individ in individuals saying uh, surveillance is bad doesn't work. We have to make, uh, means it doesn't change government's policies. It doesn't uh, make uh, government's process transparent. It doesn't make uh, uh, other go away. How many, how many of you think other is a good thing? How many of you have other? Everyone? How many of you think other is a bad thing? Very small number. How many of you think other is a good thing? Oh, that's great. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I already tell you, uh, there will be dissent. <laughs> but that's another debate, you know, other is, if other is good or bad, uh, uh, do you th uh, think government should be all powerful about over the people? You know, the thing with uh, government become all, power, uh, all powerful about people, uncontrollable, the thing is, you know, once they thought uh, they don't want to go away, they will stay there. You know, uh, how many of you heard of Kim Jong-un and North Korea? You know, he is a uh, uh, he's a dictator, right? <laughs> Means uh, what's uh, what's wrong with North Korea? Because the government has too much power. Means government can do anything. Uh, maybe in India, India is not that much, that much uh, in difficulties right now, but we still have people killing uh, for thousand dollars. Uh, but not that difficult as North Korea. Maybe one day, one day, this uh, those guys on uh, governments. Uh, like uh, top of the government think uh, let's be a dictatorship. What you can do about it? You cannot do anything about it. You can, maybe you can form societies and crowd, maybe march to it, but they have police and they have army and all. You can stop, they can stop you simply. That's the thing with, uh, and they don't have to, st uh, you cannot even start a coup. You cannot start, start a society because they are surveilling you, they are inside your system, they are inside your mobile, before make you before make a communication, they'll be tracking you. And they will be isolating you, and uh, uh, they will be stopping you before, before you, if, if, before you can, before even you can start a protest. Means uh, government is not a god. Government is a uh, collective of people, 
who is as corruptible as we are. And this, uh, the problems with us will matter for them too. And one day they think, uh, uh, let this be like this. We should have the power to say no. We should be have the power to say dissent. That's the thing, it means uh, dissent is very important. That's, uh, that's make uh, dis discussion complete. That's what's important thing in a democracy, dissent. Dissent should be allowed and it should be there. Uh, okay, I'm over to finish this chat. Uh, but before that, uh, I'm a member of the Software Community of India and we provide these services. And uh, Podary.com, you can register in Podary.com and you can get a free diaspora account and a uh, Riot account. Right, uh, it will be hosted under chat.podary.com. Diaspora is a free, is a free software alternative for Facebook, as I said, it is a free software. And uh, Riot is a WhatsApp alternative and which will be looking just like Slack. Uh, we have groups coming to send it. And uh, the, uh, you, you, uh, you, most of people use GitHub, right? How many of you in GitLab? Okay, GitLab is uh, just like GitHub with more features. Uh, and also free software too. They have enterprise edition and also a community edition. So we are hosting a GitLab edition on for git.forcecommunity.in and we have a wiki. Uh, it's mostly about FSEA uh, community involvement. It is uh, not that active, but we have a wiki about it. And uh, list, uh, there's a mailing list uh, you can request to join. And things with the, uh, these domains and all is, uh, uh, I said about being free software, but uh, in cloud computing, means this is the era of cloud computing, how can you trust even if it's a free software? Means uh, I'm hosting a free software, a domain like I'm the hosting diaspora. How can you trust me? Means the software is free software, but uh, what I'm hosting, I'm saying uh, it's a diaspora. The same content as uh, which can you which you can download from this site. I'm hosting the same content, uh, but you have to trust me, right? Means you can trust me with the uh, instance that I'm uh, hosting in my server. You have to trust me. But the thing with uh, being a community hosted uh, services. It is hosted by community, community which has members, which you can join, which there is elections. I mean, the, means which is open community, when an open community hosts a server, uh, means hosts an instance in a server, uh, you, you can trust them because it's an open community, you can be part of that community to do and uh, be joined the decision making process. And there's a chance uh, they are going to uh, this uh, make the uh, package corrupt and uh, to surveillance only or collect all your data. Means th these decisions are made inside the community and you are part of that community. And that's why these uh, domains are important because these are hosted by an open community, free software community of India. And which is me and you and everyone. You can be part of free software community of India. You don't have to, means uh, you just have to be, uh, have a happy mind to share things. Uh, not your private data, but uh, your intellectual data. So, uh, that's the thing with uh, community hosted services and TLDR. TLDR, uh, what I said about uh, social responsibility and personal responsibility, or we cannot be all social. We can be all social, but uh, you know we, have, we cannot look or look after our family. Maybe you, you cannot uh, look uh, look after yourself. Maybe you starve, you, you don't have sleep and all. That's the thing with the personal stuff. You have to look at some personal stuff. But uh, most of you have planned to have a life, uh, have a married life and have a child and have a uh, family life. Yeah, so that's the thing with personal life. And you don't want to remove it. Means you don't want to ignore it, there's a personal life. And go to complete social side. But you have to find this balance between this uh, social life and the personal life. And not to completely ignore the social life, like uh, we are doing right now. We are not, we are thinking, oh, somebody else will look after it, or someone else will do it. No, it's not it. It's you. It's what you can do. And we, it's not what you can do, it's what you collectively can do. That's the, you have to stress on that, what you collectively can do. And you have to interact with others, and you have to, uh, if you think uh, you should be socially responsible and if you find that um, ratio between personal life and social life and join communities and join communities like FSE and join communities like Wikipedia and there's a lot, 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 lot of communities out there, join it. 
and or form your own community. If you think uh, your ideologies are different, uh, if you uh, disagree with someone, you disagree with it. Raise your voice. Don't be afraid to. Uh, you don't be shy. Don't be shy to raise your hands. Don't be shy. Uh, shy to say what you think. Don't uh, be happy to share things. Means these things. Means like uh, that's what human evolution is. Means if you restrict what your knowledge is, no, that thing uh, next level doesn't happen. You have to open it for others too. Means if you be increasingly individualized, means. What's the what's point of life? Means it's just you, you're just growing, you're just dying. No, how uh, little interaction from societies, communities, and all. So, in TLDR, find the ratio between social life and uh, personal life. That's the TLDR. And you are the revolution. And believe in it. You can do something, you can be something, and you are the one who has to do, do it. And you are the revolution. Thank you. I mean, I don't think this session is uh, an appropriate thing for Q&A session, but still, <laughs> you can go on. Now, what I said, uh, don't be afraid to uh, raise your voice, have reason. Actually, one correction. Um, oh. You mentioned about the markdown being invented by um, around shots, right? Oh. Okay. No, he, he didn't invent the uh, uh, markdown. Actually, he did uh, some software on the markdown. Oh, okay. The markdown was invented by Daring Fall Wall, something like that. Okay. You heard the guy? Sorry, corrected. Anyone else, any questions? You had said that uh, Wikipedia is open, right? Yeah. So, uh, I wanted to know about your viewpoint on like, for example, there are people who are posting fake pages in Wikipedia and it is possible that people believe in that too. So because it's open to edit and delete, there are people who are, use, who are not using it properly and having fake pages. So I wanted to know your viewpoint on that. Uh, my viewpoint is you are right. Uh, you are right, there are people who are uh, posting fake stuff, yeah, adding their opinions in, into it. But the thing with this, uh, Wikipedia is an uh, active society, more active society, and there are more and more people uh, viewing every changes in Wikipedia. Instance, uh, at, at this instance, there can be thousands of people. I think uh, at a time there will be 3,000 edits, I don't know. Uh, people involved this, uh, people are viewing, uh, viewing what are the changes in it. Uh, people are uh, looking, reading it. They are, means once, uh, means like, it's like a Linux law, you know. If there are so many eyes, the big bug is easy to catch. So there are so many eyes in case of Wikipedia. It means so many people are reading it, and if you are if if you are finding it uh, if a, if a fact wrong, you know they can say this is wrong, and they can date it back to it. And there's th another thing with reference. It means uh, when there is a descent occurs, we have to put a reference into it. You know, Wikipedia, everything added to Wikipedia should be reference. And the criteria for reference would be very uh, complex thing. Uh, that makes uh, Wikipedia more credible. But the thing is, uh, Wikipedia is an active community and uh, it's a magnificent, it's a ma magical thing uh, that uh, these changes, these fake things are easily cached and easily edited back, reverted back to Wikipedia. And uh, if you don't know uh, the contents in Wikipedia, Means every edit in Wikipedia is stored. There is a history, uh, it's like Git and all, and you can revert back to that edit. Uh, we can uh, undo that edit. Uh, uh, means we can analyze every means who did it, who uh, who didn't do that, and uh, when somebody makes so many fake news and uh, uh, some administrators means anybody catch it, uh, they can flag this guy is uh, this guy is doing so much bad works, and uh, now we can ban him means like administrators can ban him under the country criteria. So fake news are happening and these bannings are happening. And yeah. Yeah, so uh, the thing is that we should need change in politics. So we saw Amami party and new parties coming into the field to change what we are. So what, how can we use the free software community as a political tool? I mean, as a political revolution. I mean, we need that. India really needs a political change so that uh, a party with which is more honesty, more democratic, more process. So I saw Pirate Party of India is active right now, but the problem with Pirate Party is that they are uh, confined to the free software policy. I mean, 
if you need to get the message out to people you need to use facebook you need to use the uh, not proprietary softwares right so how can we actually uh, you know make a political revolution from the free software community actually uh, i would like to start from saying you know revolution is not just single line you no know, there is no single path to a revolution a revolution take multiple paths and uh, if you think uh, a revolution can be only done by being strict to your policies that's one path but uh, there are other ways uh, people use facebook and all i don't use facebook i am actually a strict to a policy guy but i respect those who think uh, uh, facebook using facebook and all our political necessity like you know there are so many activities going inside facebook you know like uh, using facebook means so many movements we see in kerala means so many so many movements are activated by facebook and uh, what's up there are two things one thing is uh, what uh, is you know this digital interaction is not just enough It means most of the thing happens when we talk personally so that's one thing but second thing when we come to digital interaction the idea with uh, not indian pi this is pirate part of india is or now it is indian pirates uh, india pirates had a strict policy on uh, using free software alternatives is uh, once it go once it goes big like a big organization or anything else we cannot change it like uh, right now what's the case with uh, facebook is too big to fail means you cannot uh, change everything everyone inside facebook to some other, some other uh, free software alternative right now to start a movement this is so is so the difficult right but the same difficulty cannot be made into that future so uh, that's my opinion means that's why i think uh, making free software uh, stricter when we start a new organization we are, we should look for a free software policy because uh, in future you don't you don't have to have this difficulty of migrating all those people from one uh, system to another system and uh, to all you all of you people means we have this free software alternatives you ha you have to migrate to it you are not uh, usual ordinary people who has difficulty to understand what things goes on you are developers you are technical people and you have enough knowledge to understand what's going on we can change things and it's a free software you can contribute to it if you think it's something is not inconvenient make it inconvenient make it convenient as you like it and release it maybe they will accept to your up, accept it to upstream and you will have that convenient feature in your application or start your own application yourself that's the thing with free software and don't look at convenience that's what i want to say and uh, about what he said that's the thing like uh, this migration problem is one thing and uh, uh, being a political party and uh, not being an individual it should be uh, more needed that we should be strict on the policies political pa parties should not be flexible on the policies it should have a direction uh, it's like uh, like what roshad said line watchman never compromise in the face of amagaran same thing same thing goes with the political parties should be strict on their policies never flexible problem is uh, what happens is uh, political parties go a little flexible on uh, this their ideologies and uh, make everything happen that that shouldn't happen thank you